What's up guys, Tommy Bowyer here from Move Rewind and today I'll be reviewing Casualty Series 31. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the 31st series of Casualty aired from the 27th of August 2016 and concluded after 44 episodes on the 29th of July 2017. Series 31 marks Casualty's 30th anniversary and not only did they have a massive 30th anniversary extended episode to open the series but this entire series celebrates Casualty's past, present and future and in my personal opinion it's one of the strongest series of Casualty that has ever been made. This series really does feel like a special series. You can tell that everything from the acting to the writing to the stunt work, everything is on top form. Everyone is giving 110%. And I love the fact that Casualty took its 30th anniversary very seriously because some shows just kind of say, oh, well, you know what, it's just another year. Casualty realised how important it was. They're the longest running medical drama in the world. So obviously they're going to make a massive fuss over their 30th anniversary. And their 30th anniversary episode, Too Old For This Shift, it's a fantastic episode. I mean, it is flawless. The acting in that episode is so good. I love how it centres around Charlie. Of course, Charlie has been in the show since day one. So it makes sense to... Um, centered this whole episode around Charlie celebrating his 30th anniversary at Holby ED. And then, of course, they used that great opportunity to bring in loads of former characters. I love how there is like a video message that different characters who have come and gone over the years leave a message for Charlie and kind of thank him for how much support he gave them during their time in the ED. I think it was just a very clever way of bringing back loads of iconic characters for brief moments. It's just one of those things which make this episode truly special. You can tell it's celebrating Casualty's past. It's not just saying about the characters that are in the programme at that moment. It's also saying that Casualty's been running for 30 years now and there's so many iconic characters which have helped it grow over the years. So yeah, I really love Too Old for this shift and of course it's action packed as well. You have Grace Beecham and Connie Beecham in their car, which has fallen off a cliff. You then have the helicopter crash in the ED, which is amazing stunt work at its finest. And as I said previously, I love the fact that this entire special is centered around Charlie Fairhead, the man who has seen almost everything there is to see in that ED. And he is the man who has to stand up and hold his team together when they are at breaking point. But the series doesn't let up after the 30th anniversary. There are so many moments in series 31 which are just great. You have Charlie and Duffy's wedding, that's a really special moment in this series. So you just have so many moments in series 31 which just make it seem that much more special. So yeah, I, as you can probably tell, I love series 31. It is the anniversary series. I think it was a great idea that Casualty chose to not just have the anniversary special, they chose to have an entire series dedicated to celebrating Celebrating casualty and I think it paid off very well. So as I have said so many times in these series of reviews, a series of casualty is only as good as the characters you've got in it and series 31 has some great character driven storylines. Let's start off with the original Charlie Fairhead. He has a great series in series 31. Obviously casualty fans were ecstatic when it was confirmed that Kathy Shipton was returning to the role of Lisa Duffy Duffin. Another uh, original character who has come and gone over Casualty's 30 year history so it was great to see Duffy return and sometimes when old characters come back it takes them a couple of months to settle back into the show. With Duffy she settles in from day one. From the very first episode she's a regular again it just feels like she's been there forever. It just feels right to see Duffy and Casualty and I love the fact that they finally get Charlie and Duffy together and they finally get married. That was a will they, won't they relationship 30 years in the running and I can only imagine if you were a viewer who have watched the show since 1986 how special that wedding episode was. And honestly, the wedding episode I think is very underrated because it's actually an episode with no real negativity. You know, there are not really many emotional 
uh, and crisis moments. It's a happy episode. The stag do is really funny. I love uh, Charlie's stag do, especially Dylan, uh, because Dylan is just like, he's out of his place there. You know, they're all getting drunk and Dylan's just like, I'm just not, not interested in any of this whatsoever. Why have you stolen the sheep? So that stag do is, is, is hilarious. And of course, the actual wedding where they give their vows, I think it's brilliant. I love the fact that Charlie won't marry her as Lisa. He's just like, no, it's Duffy. It will always be Duffy. That's just a truly special moment, which I love. I could watch that episode again and again. Also, Connie Beecham. Connie has a great series in series 31. Obviously, she takes centre stage during the 30th anniversary episode because her daughter is critically injured in an accident. Um, not only does she fall off a cliff in a car, the helicopter, which is then carrying her to the ED, then crash lands so obviously grace spends the majority of the series recuperating and you really do see a more vulnerable side to connie because connie is very strong-willed you know especially in terms of her professional life she knows what she's doing she knows she has to be hard and tough in order to survive when it comes to her daughter she doesn't know how to cope and she'll often just try and find solace in her work instead of looking after her daughter and obviously connie is at her best when she has a nemesis in the ED. And she finds that in the form of fellow consultant Elle Gardner, who takes over as acting clinical lead. And Connie blames Elle for Grace's injuries because she didn't intubate at the time, which Connie feels that she should have. So I really enjoyed that storyline, Connie's revenge storyline against Elle. It really makes you root for Elle as a character um, because Elle weren't exactly a character I found that popular when she first joined. But after the after what she went through with Connie, I really started to appreciate how tough that character is. Um, I think it's a great clash of personalities because Elle is, of course, a lot more friendly and open-minded than Connie. And yet they are quite similar in terms of being two strong, independent women who will do anything in order to protect their team. So I really do like what they do with Connie and Elle in this series. They both have very strong storylines this series. Other character storylines which I really enjoy in Series 31, you have David's bipolar storyline. This is when I really started to appreciate actor Jason Durr. He was amazing during the bipolar storyline. I love how it shows a gradual decline. And that's the one thing which nothing beats long running dramas um, because you can see a character descend into a very negative place over a long period of time. And they do that expertly with David's bipolar storyline. I love how we have that episode when he is manic and we kind of see how David sees the world and how he's experiencing all of these emotions. So I think it was great. They handled David's bipolar storyline very well. Robin's pregnancy storyline. I think series 31 marks a turning point for Robin's character because before she became pregnant, she was very much kind of a happy-go-lucky, somewhat immature n nurse. After she becomes pregnant and eventually gives birth to Charlotte, she's a lot more motherly, she's a lot more determined to look after her child and support other members of the ED team as well. So I think Series 31 definitely marks a turning point for Robin's character and Amanda Henderson is really good in the role of Robin, especially during those more emotional moments when Charlotte's in intensive care. She does a great job in those episodes, I have to say. You have the love triangle between brothers Ethan and Cal and Alicia as well. And I love that love triangle. It's really fun. Um, Alicia is a great character and obviously I love her chemistry with Ethan. Alicia and Ethan are one of my favourite casualty couples um, which the show has ever done. So you can tell that these are two people which really should be together. But whenever it looks like they're about to get together, something happens. You know, at first it looks like they're about to get together, but then Ethan chickens out and then Cal comes in and starts sleeping with Alicia himself. And then as it seems that Cal has finally given Ethan the green light and said, look, you two belong with one another. He then gets stabbed and killed. And Cal's death, re-watching it, it was hard. Um, there were tears in my eyes. George Rainsford, who portrays Ethan as an actor, he was amazing when he discovers that Cal is dead. I mean, I think even if you don't watch Casualty, you just show someone that moment and you'd probably be close to tears. 
because the acting is just phenomenal in those scenes. It really is. Ethan's grief after Cal's death, I would say carries the rest of the series. George Rainsford as an actor is very talented, but in particular, when he's portraying grief, Rainsford, I don't think can be beat. You know, just the look of Ethan after his brother's death, it just looks like a man who is a shadow of his former self. You get the feeling that Ethan can't survive without his brother being there. And I think it's great how it then turns into a revenge plot against the horrible Ellison family, especially Scott Ellison, who was responsible for Cal's death because obviously Scott stabbed him. Um, Scott is a great villain. You know, he's a thug. There's no redeeming qualities to that character whatsoever. And that's not always a bad thing. You know, you don't always need a sympathetic villain. Sometimes you just need a villain who is just pure evil. And I think it's great that Ethan kind of becomes obsessed with bringing Scott to justice. And obviously it ends with, um, I think, one of the most shocking moments in Casualty's history when Ethan allows Scott to die. You know, when Scott's choking on his own vomit in the ED, Ethan just leaves. He just walks out the door, and by the time the other doctors and nurses notice, it's too late and Scott is dead. And to be honest, I remember watching this at the time, and I honestly thought, how the hell are they going to redeem Ethan's character? Because it made Ethan quite a dark character, and he's kind of responsible for a man's death. Yes, it was his brother's murderer, but even so, he's still responsible for a man's death. And I just thought, wow, Casualty have a massive backbone. They're prepared to put their characters in such dark places that it looks like they can't be redeemed. So yeah, Series 31 really does end on a great and shocking moment. And obviously, as throughout the series, George Rainsford... He delivers in the role of Ethan very well. Now, one minor uh, character that I have to talk about in this series, um, and also moan about as well, and that is the character of Sam Strachan. Now, Holby City fans will probably know Sam was a Holby City regular. He's the father of Grace. He was in a relationship with Connie Beecham. So Sam is a character with a long history with, the, with uh, Connie and Grace. And he comes in... Um, as a recurring character in this series, he gets a job as medical director. And as I said, Connie is at her best when she's up against an opponent. And Sam is a great opponent because obviously as medical director, he's bringing in place all of these cuts. He wants to get rid of one consultant. All consultants have to reapply for their jobs. So he's, he's a great adversary for Connie to be up against. But there is great chemistry as well between... Connie and Sam, you can tell that there is such a strong connection between them, even though they might differ professionally, even though they might differ on how they handle Grace, you can tell that they have feelings for one another. So it's great to see scenes between them because you can just sense the electricity between them. I'm just ashamed that Sam departs at the end of this series because I honestly believe that Sam could have become a regular character because he steps down as medical director and then in the last couple of episodes of the series he's a trust grade doctor so he basically fills in Cal's registrar position and he's great he interacts with all of the ED team really well uh, Tom Chambers is a great actor and I just wish that Sam had become a regular character because I really do think given how series 32 went Sam could have become an integral part of the ED team so it's just a shame how some things work out I get the fact that maybe the actor didn't want to stay in the series or maybe the writers just didn't have any storylines to go but I honestly do see potential there so it's a shame that Sam leaves by the end of this series it really is so in conclusion Series 31 of Casualty, I stand by what I said at the opening of this video. It's one of the best series of Casualty. Um, the acting is fantastic. The writing is spectacular. The stunt work looks awesome. Everything is on top form in Series 31. And also, I didn't mention this, there are very little cast changes in Series 31. You have the introduction of Duffy and then you have the departure of Cal. And that is it. So I think little cast changes actually help this series. It feels a bit more coherent. And this is the anniversary series. I, I don't think Casualty have ever really done uh, an anniversary series before. Series 36 definitely didn't feel like an anniversary series. 
Um, and from what I remember, Series 21 didn't really feel like an anniversary series either. This series definitely does feel like a proper anniversary series. It, Casualty was in its prime. It was getting really strong viewing figures at this time. Everyone, I think, had a renewed investment in this series because people do. You know, people do when it's a big anniversary. You know, it was 30th anniversary, so obviously people who hadn't watched the show in a couple of years would be intrigued to come back and watch it. And I think that they would have been pleasantly surprised at how strong the show was in its 30th year. Series 31 is great. I love it. I could watch it again and again. Everything is amazing in this series. And if you're sick of me saying that this series is great or amazing, I would say you haven't watched Series 31 because I think you would be just as impressed as I am with this series. So thanks for watching guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future and I will see you in another one. See ya!